first thing you need to do is contact either myself or any of the community members, which is my email address. Um, but we'll get you, we'll meet with you, set up an application. Um, depending on what you know, what you would like to do, some items may require. If, if you, for example, want to apply for full weatherization, a new roof, insulation in your home, um, complete HVAC uh, renovation, retrofitting, fitting, you would apply for one of the two loans. An energy audit may be required, and we'll walk you through that process along with, we'll give you a list of the auditors that you would um, need to contact. You can even help you set that up. The application is something that will work before you, so you won't have to fill anything out yourself. Um, once you are approved for the application, you go ahead and install those energy efficiency uh, measures from the check that the city of Maryland is going to send you, and then begin the payment process. And, and we did make up packets in advance, so if it's something you wanted to get ahead of time, look over, look over the application. Um, so Jacob put something in the paper two weeks ago, and we have had phone ringing, people coming in, unbelievable response just to the write-up with the information we had at that time. So we did put together a packet that you could take and read over everything, the application's in there, so you can look at it and then come back with the questions. And the committee is also available to help you apply for other additional rebates, tax credits, and other funding if you need it. I, I, I also see uh, in the brochure as well as on the screen there the verification of income. Yes. What does that stipulate? Uh, that's something the state of Maryland is requiring. They haven't given us any details to what the verification of income is. Uh, we're meeting with Don Medley, the representative from the Department of Housing and Community Development. It's something that we do need to ask her. Current, right now, we have people interested. We have a number of people that are interested in the program. Um, no one has actually submitted an application in yet, but it's just a matter of days. Before somebody does. We have a number of homeowners, um, homeowners and business owners that are in, you know, very interested in applying for this program. And just so I'm totally clear, these are loans, yes. not grants Correct. or anything like yeah. that. Currently, this program is a loan program only. Um, mm -hmm. In the future, it may change to a grant uh, program or a rebate program. Okay. So as right now, the questions that we had asked the Department of um, Housing Community Development, okay. until the $20 million is fully allocated, allocated it's a loan program only, in the future it may change. Okay. And is that the profits or non-profits? I mean, yes, okay. non, uh, it's for-profit, non-profit, government institutions, schools, uh, and religious institutions can all apply for the program. It's not limited uh, to for-profit or residential Schools. Very good. Matthew Stewart is also one of the committee members. I want to offer one thing because I've seen these loan programs in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, everywhere, or not great programs also. One thing that makes this very different than the rest of them um, is, a, is that businesses uh, typically, uh, they're going to put out, they're going to put some money up in order to get something. In other words, most of them, like Del Mar or BG and E, they're 15%, 20%, 30%. That's what they'll cover. Where's the other 70% come from? Banks don't want to lend money on energy improvements because they don't see it. They don't see a big piece of equipment coming in, so they can't go get it and take it back. So, energy type of improvements have been real slow. The banks did not want to lend. And so now, this is uh, the DOA standing behind the program, so business can borrow the money and the DOA stand behind it. They're very, very low interest rate. So in most instances, once the work's done, you can generate a positive cash flow, and that's what makes it very attractive. Very good. That sounds great. <coughs> Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Asma. Thank you. Thank you. Remember that Asma. Asma is a wonderful volunteer. <laughs> <laughs>
to do dog is wrong or something, but you got to do the faith. Okay, Lewis. Okay, uh, the item I have tonight is a contract. Uh, I've come before the board with a contract from J&J uh, uh, &J Computing Inc. doing business as fireworks extravaganza. The people who have put on our fireworks display for the last several years and have received uh, when I had uh, uh, applause every time. Uh, the contract this year is for uh, it's a one-year contract. And the fireworks display in Meadow Park, John, actually in the Kenny Park, will be for $14,600.25. I would ask the board to authorize a contract based on the hard work of Mayor Persona to get sponsors this year so it doesn't come out of what the taxpayers are paying for, but they're giving us tonight. So it's not coming out of the taxpayers' coffers this year. The mayor and. Yeah, plus we, uh, Look, we also. Got, uh, I already actually got more donations than I expected. I even got enough money to um, include our band, yeah. which was an additional $1,500. So thanks to all the business people in the town and everybody that supported it. They, they came through with flying colors. And as Lewis said, the taxpayers were not paying for it. A lot of sponsorship came out to help us out with this because it was cut out of the budget. And uh, as he said, we're very proud that they helped us have it so we can continue our 4th of July celebration this year. And, so, I, and I did make a couple of calls as well yeah. that came through. Mm -hmm. I'm very pleased so, about that good. as well. Okay. Uh, I would ask the board to approve the contract with uh, J&J Computing doing business as forward for the uh, 2011 4th of July ceremony. I have a motion to accept the recommendation. Second. Have a second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Okay. That's it. Pardon? Anything else? Oh, no, sir. Oh, okay. okay. The only thing I have is, um, I know Lewis had sent the email out to the commissioners, but um, let the public know as well that uh, it took us a while to get HDTV in the in the Elkton, and we fought a long time to get that. We finally did get that, and now um, we do now have on demand. So if anybody goes and has the cable, they just ch hit channel one. We will now have on demand. Um, so we we fought long and hard to get that, and now the town has got that. If you have you basically have the cable, you now can get movies. You can even. Look at the shows two and three days behind. If you missed a show, you can go back and look at that show. Um, and it works just as like anything else. You can rewind it, stop it. It's amazing features that you got. But one other thing it will do, you'd have to buy a box. I get a box, and it would be $15 additional a month, which will do almost anything and anything you can think of. Uh, record shows long in advance. You can set it and record two shows at a time. It, it's something else. But... Uh, I'm just glad to say we finally got it, so I think Elkton's finally getting up there. Comes with a cost. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but one other thing, too. Uh, I did learn that uh, the boxes you have now, um, if you get a new box, uh, the gentleman told us that you should keep that box because eventually down the road, the regular, some of the uh, channels you're getting now, like HTV and all those things like that, you're not going to be able to get them unless you have a box. So I think they're like kind of catch you one way or the other. So, but you can keep that box if you want, if you replace it with an updated DVR box. So if you do that, keep that box so you won't miss out on anything. As everybody knows that we had a very good meeting uh, yesterday with uh, Congressman Andy Harris. Um, went very well. Of course, I'm still trying to push the train station and I took him over there and he's very, interested and uh, he could understand why we didn't have a train here either and he said he'd definitely look into it and why we couldn't get a mark train to stop here in Elkton you know but uh, he will look into it and get back with me but I also um, being vice chair of the um, well MAPCO uh, committee there um, I had the invitation to go to um, the um, 
Greater uh, Philadelphia Chambers also has invited um, Secretary LaHood down to discuss President Obama's vision of transportation infrastructure. Um, it'll be next Tuesday morning at the uh, riverfront. Um, so I will be going there and hoping to be able to talk to that gentleman and try to push the train some more. He's the one that's got all the money for uh, Maryland since uh, the governor of Florida gave back that $2.4 billion. And of course, Maryland did get some of that money. But sadly to say, we didn't get any of the money to help us down here in Elkton. So I will we'll continue to push for money to get us that train station open sooner or later. So, okay, that's all I have. Hey, right, Joe. Um, I just wanted to thank our finance director, Steve Rupol, for putting out the budget versus the actual. Um, I think, I hope it's what the uh, people wanted and it's easy to read and thank you. You're welcome. And that's all I have. Earl? That's all right. I just want to make sure everyone received the uh, uh, information they wanted from uh, the property over there on um, mm -hmm. the 801 building. I asked them to put it in the package, I think it was Friday, or not Friday, it was Friday. yesterday. So you guys should have received this, this information that we asked for from the last time. Don't rush into anything, just read it and, and probably get back with information on the uh, recreation center. Okay. It? And we all got it at the same time. Nobody got it before nobody, so. Right. I haven't got mine yet, but I'll pick it, it up. should have been packaged. Charlie? Lewis, over on um, Friendship Road, uh, some people would like to be considered for speed humps because on um, the Locust Lane, they avoid that because of the speed humps and they go around the other way. So therefore they got a, a long run to go where they have to go and with the speed. Okay. I don't know how much money you got, but you know, consideration. Um, number two, I attended the uh, Parks and Rec program at Elton High School on this past Saturday and Sunday and Mary's uh, children and her staff did an outstanding job up there. Uh, the, Auditory will hold 650 people, and I was there Saturday night, and I assume the same was Sunday. Are all you there on Sunday? Wasn't there on Sunday, but <clears throat> and uh, she she did an outstanding job, so she's to be commended. Um, you can add in there the program grown so much that mm -hmm. you had to use two days. Yeah, yeah, very nice. And Joe, do you know we are in with the county with this? sharing of the um, emergency services. How long are we going to be with that? Or do you know, or do we have to, have to chief that question? Chief, that's something we, we've all signed on to. So it would have to be discussed and see if you, whatever you want to do about it. Because I still think sometimes there needs to be a direct way to get to the police department right here because you have a dispatcher and if something is really an emergency, it might be just as quick or to run in here to say something is going on in town and they can get there quicker. Now, whether they do it, I, I don't know. And another prime example, unfortunately for me, a young man got suspended today and he called me everything except a child of God and he was outside threatening me. So I was going to show him my power to have the police come and take him off school property. So the secretary was getting ready to call 911, but then she changed her mind. I told her not to because when she calls 911, now you're involved in the Board of Education who's going to be saying, well, what's going on over there at Elton High School when you got a small problem? But fortunately, I was able to call Lewis today, and he was to get somebody in dispatch to send somebody over there. So you see this great big problem when it was just a simple thing if we were able to get a direct call in. I mean, it could be something happening down the street here. You know. Could we run up here and say there's something happened, or do we have to dial the 911? That's yeah. just, that's well, we, we could do it that way. I don't know. I'm you know, just saying. We can call our guys. And even the night when we had a meeting, remember when we had the young lady up the street? Yeah. And yeah. we tried to get her to go about her merry way. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can't have to do call it. 911. You've got to call 911. That's the system that's set up. That's, a, that's, that's what we have to go by right now. Right now. Well, you remember that night, Lewis? We came to get you. Yeah. And we had to get 911. Can you imagine that? But. Go ahead, please. As a citizen, 
I was actually told that if you respond to the police department in person and have a seat, they will dispatch 911 for you. If you have what? That would be the response. They if would you dispatch, come here. The, the local police department would dispatch 911. Oh, is that right? Oh, okay. If you call here. You would have to take it through 911. Yeah. And I think that's what they. Oh, that's it. Okay. Chuck? Um, yeah, I, I totally agree with that as well. I think there's something we really need to take a look at. Um, but I wanted to uh, find out um, how uh, the recycle program has been received so far. I'm sorry. The recycle program, oh, okay. how has it been received so far? Any complaints or? Yes, of course. We've had an awful lot of questions. Um, I think mostly it's just something new that people are getting used to. Um, we've had some questions about what is re what you can recycle, what you can't. We're very general. Um, for the most part, everybody's been very receptive to it. Okay. Right. Well, I can tell you, I've seen an improvement in my, my development because the first time around, a lot of people kept putting their trash out on Friday and. Of course, my wife did go around help a little bit, giving notices out, and the uh, past week now I noticed it's gotten a little bit less. So it's, it's going to take some time, I think, for people to catch on and word of mouth to neighbors, backs and forth talking. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what happened, yeah. on, I would say, on my street. I got a lot of, lot of participation, and they're very excited about it and, and looking forward to it. I also want to uh, thank, thank Lewis for uh, getting the uh, state highway to meet out at the... Uh, the uh, school crossing there at the uh, at the uh, practice fields um, uh, as we investigate more on that to see if anything can be done. But I appreciate the town going forward with that. Um, and that's, that's about it. I have to bring Okay, Becky. I have you do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. My name is Rebecca McKinney. <coughs> I'm from Cecil County, mostly often. I appreciate Cindy Austin being with us tonight. She's on the lot for 150 East Main Street, her Millie Bowes, and Mr. Hicks. We also, at 150, we have one, once a month, we have a birthday party. We also have a very great dinner once a month. And we had bingo once a month, which is led by me and Dawn. And we were doing a wonderful job with it. And we're trying to do the best we can. And Cindy helped us with it. And Nelly did very good for us in helping. And we are trying to do more protection there than what we can available. I'm like Mr. Gibbons. I think it's a waste of our time to dial 911 or just a police call. We never had to do that before, and I'm 70, and I've worked with the Upton Police Department for the last over 40-some years, and the town of Upton both had a member of jail. But I volunteer, I appreciate volunteering, I've been a very jail for years. The Lions Club does a wonderful job for this town. And they always will, and know they don't use nobody's boss's place but their own. Also, I agree, and I think that Upton Police Department has all these new fancy cars they got that we can't even afford a bicycle. The, the pedal one. They have radios in them, they have computers in them. So why should we? Waste the money that's been wasted on these cars every year. They have to have new cars. We have to dial 911 to have an emergency. No, I don't. Well, what is it? I would tell you where to go, and I'm telling you now. So if you don't like to go there, I can call the sheriff's department, and they will do their job. Because Upton is not doing their job. I've given Joe two addresses tonight, right here in Upton on Main Street that's been going on for the last four months and not one thing has been done about it. What? Today, I was at, 150, at the senior building shopping. 
for a used clothing, okay? A lady comes to me, she said, Mrs. McKinney, I know you volunteer with the Upland Police Department in the town. You do me a favor. And I said, yes, ma'am, I will. She's already laden. She said, I live over top of a pediatrician here on Main Street. <coughs> I cannot sleep at all of the night with the carrying on from the noise and the drug addicts and things in front of my building. I said, that's not nothing new. Go out to the courthouse every night. Go out to the baseball field. And I said, you know, you can't get an Optum Police Department to do nothing this. The best thing you can do is call 410-996-5500. And they will be right there in no time at all. Or call 287-6291 and dial 15, and they will be here right away too. It's pretty bad when we have to call the Sheriff's Department and the State Police to come in and do Upton's job because Upton Force don't want to do their job. They got these fancy cars, but they can't do anything. Strangers set out in front of our building, behind our building overnight after we're done closed. It's dark, and you can watch them all night long sitting out there. You call them. We'll get there. Well, when are you going to get there? Tomorrow morning, 6 o'clock? Because it's up call at 10, and it's 12 now, and you ain't been here yet. So this is what I'm telling you. They do not do what they're asked to do. Through 911 or nothing. The best thing to do is call 398-4200 and push 15, because that officer will get out and do his job day or night. And you know who it is, Lieutenant Larry. He will do his job day and night. And that's a shame we have to depend on two officers and Upton to do their job day and night. When we have 20 cars, and they're very, very, very expensive cars, not one of us and not one of you all could afford one of those cars. And why, Lewis, do we have to pay that money for all these cars when they don't do the job? Lewis? Ms. Becky, I'm going to say, I hear, I mean, I'm doing this out of respect. I think we have a great police uh, force, and I hear this all the time. One minute we complain about them, the next minute we, we, uh, we pat them on the back. Now, the police, I think we have a good force, and I'm going to say that. I don't care about anybody else, what they think. I just know that they're doing their job. One day you'll come here and say something real nice about them, and then the next minute you'll say something bad. Out of respect, we have a good police force. And I'm going to say that, and, and I'll stand right behind them. Well, where are they at when you call them? How come it takes them from... Nine I'm not going to argue with you, Ms. Becky. I'm not going to argue with you. It's just that I'm just letting you know we have a good police force. I'm just asking you a question. All right. I'm just, just asking a question, Joe. Oh, just let us know what else, and that's it, Mr. Mickey, okay? So what can they do? They're doing, like he said, they're doing their job. <coughs> There's a lot of things they do that you don't know that they do. So they do a lot. Well, I walk around, but you're not known, no. and I see nothing. So you ride around tonight at 11 o'clock, all of us, and you see what's going on on Main Street. And I can name them, Davises and Smiths, that there's name. And you know who I mean, Joe, and you have the address. Okay, I'll give it to the chief. Okay, I have a request for a closed meeting. So can I get a motion to have a closed meeting? You have to read that whole thing. For any, for any other personnel matter that affects one or more specified individuals. I'm going to get a motion to have a closed meeting. So what, what's it for again, personnel? Right. Second. Mm -hmm. You have a second? The Earl made the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. We will not be reconvening. Let me go to the party. Let me go to the party. Yes, indeed. 